dear students proteins fold in order to take 3d forms and shapes initially if you look at a protein in its unfolded form then all the amino acids that constitute that protein are essentially at 180 degrees to each other but once the protein folds it manages to change this 180 degree angle into some larger or smaller angles let's see what these angles were and what is the plot that is used to plot them called. Phi and Psi were the angles that we considered to form between the alpha carbon and the peptide bond planes surrounding the alpha carbon. So the Phi involved the angle between beta carbons and the nitrogen and alpha carbon were considered to be the singular atom. The psi, on the other hand, was the angle between two nitrogen atoms, while the alpha and the beta carbon were considered to be overlap. If you look at the proteins, then these phi and psi angles, they are in varying measure. So they can be varying for different amino acids, they can be constant for different amino acids as well. It all depends on how a protein is actually folded. When these phi and psi angles take different sizes then they take up the secondary or tertiary structures in a protein if you remember i told you about the beta sheets the alpha helices these were the secondary structures which exist within proteins now if you look at the phi and psi angles within all the alpha carbons that are there in an alpha helix or if you look at all the psi angles within the protein, then you will look and you will be surprised to find out that these angles, they actually fall within a very specific range. In this figure, I have plotted the psi and phi angles for you. And you can see that out of the entire range from minus 180 degrees, to a plus 180 degrees on both axes only a small number of angles are actually viable so this red blue and green area that is labeled on this plot are the angles that actually exist in reality while all the others they are not taken up by the peptide chain so one this is very interesting because it means that nature is selecting specific psi and phi angles in order to fold the proteins. And secondly, if you plot them using this strategy which was discovered by Ramachandran et al. And therefore it is called the Ramachandran plot. You can see how these angles are distributed for various secondary structures. So this is the Ramachandran plot which is used to visualize the psi and phi angles that exist inside different bonds in a protein. In one of the very interesting studies that was published by Lowell et al. in 2003, as shown in this slide, they looked at the psi and phi angles for about 100,000 different data points for several amino acids in various proteins. And they found out that Alpha helices, as shown here, only contain this range of psi and phi angles, while the beta sheets only contained psi and phi within this range. So this is very interesting that if you survey a lot of proteins, you always get psi and phi angles from the secondary structures and they are limited to fall within this selected range. Okay, in conclusion, the take home message would be that the psi and phi angles, they have a very limited range in the real biologically viable proteins. Interestingly, these phi and psi angles can be looked at and classified to belong to an uh, alpha helix or a beta sheet, which were the secondary structures that we talked about earlier.
Also that this range of angles is the only allowable torsion angle range or this is the only conformation in which a protein can actually exist.